Welcome to Dropping In, a podcast of storytelling and interviews with your host, Winter Olympian Mercedes Nickel. Thank you so much for dropping in today. This is series 12 where I'm reaching out to Team Canada that is going to Paris hopefully this summer in 2024. That will be happening happening July 26th to August 11th and all eyes will be on Paris because it's it sounds like a phenomenal area to have an Olympics. Um as I said this is series 12 the journey for Team Canada athletes to 2024 Paris. This is episode 103 and we're recording March 25th on a Monday and I'm in Whistler. Let me introduce the next guest we have coming on. Now, our next guest father coached Team Canada's men's volleyball team in its Olympic debut in Atlanta in 96 to a bronze medal. He was her first coach while she was starting in indoor volleyball until the age of 17. Now, volleyball runs in their blood. This is a family thing. Not only was her dad a coach, but her brother was on the national beach volleyball team as well. Now, she has been on Canada's beach volleyball team since 2011. That's a a long haul. And is now one of Canada's top-rated beach volleyball players. In 2011, with her partner, they brought home a silver medal from the Junior World Championships. And she's only gone on to do more and more competitions since those Junior Worlds. She's won gold medals at the 2018 and the 2022 Commonwealth Games. Her and her teammate made history in 2019 as Canada's first ever world champions in beach volleyball. And that victory secured their spot at the Tokyo 2020 slash 2021 Olympics. 2019, she was named part of the F. IVB Most Outstanding Female Beach Volleyball Team. The accolades just keep coming and having multiple podium finishes in international tournaments, finishing, sorry, including FIVB World Tour events, also having competed at the Tokyo 2020-2021 Games, placing fifth. She also gives back to the sporting world, sitting on the Canadian Olympic Committee, Athletes Commission, and the Pan American Athletes Committee. In 2022, she formed a new partnership with Brandy Wilkerson, and they have their sights set on Paris 2024. I'm so excited to introduce this friend, sister, daughter, world champion, Olympian, and all-around amazing human, Melissa Humane Parody. Oh my gosh, what an intro. <laughs> isn't, it wi- so oh, isn't it wild to hear all those things? It is. It's a, it's a big trip for sure. I think you don't realize it when you're in the thick of it, like all the things you have accomplished to get you to this point. But when you hear it, you're like, oh, oh, wow. Okay. I know they never, you never have something where they're like all together unless you're like looking yourself up on Wikipedia, which you don't normally do. (laughs) I've done that in a bit. Haven't done it in a bit. (laughs) No. Okay. I'm good. It's nice to see you. Are you ready to start dropping in with the 10 rapid fire questions that you've never seen? (sighs) Yeah, no, I'm nervous, but I'm I'm ready. (laughs) Okay, they're they're pretty funny ones. Um, okay. Number one, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Um, um, I would love the power to time travel. Yeah. Wait, back? I would love to go back. What about forward? Um, forward, no, because I kind of want to live life in mm. that way. But I feel like there are things that I would like to go experience again. Okay. Rad. I love it. Oh, by the way, these are never rapid. It's just okay, I was so like, the list. No, the I'm listeners sure. get to know you a little bit more. Okay, uh, number two, what's the most adventurous thing you've ever done outside of volleyball? For my birthday mm. a couple of years ago, my boyfriend surprised me by going bungee jumping um, in oh. Nanaimo over yeah. like this like valley uh, in this river area. And I was mortified. It was <laughs> so scary. I was like at the edge of it. And the worst part was there was a nine-year-old girl who went like before me who just like did it like this, like it was nothing. And I'm like shaking. I'm like, I can't do this. So yeah, that was the scariest thing I've ever done. Did you go together or you went separate? Separately. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Feet mm-hmm. first or by your chest? Um, I, you, I dove off first. Yeah. So like, you were attached at your feet? Yes, exactly. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Okay. So major whiplash. Yeah. <laughs> Would you do it again? No. No. 
You're like, no. done. Check that off yeah, the list. I checked it off. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. Number three, what's the weirdest food combination you've ever tried that surprisingly tasted good? Hmm. Um, it's funny. I have a couple that come to mind. One recently I was talking about it. It's a bagel with cream cheese and peanut butter. I don't know if that's weird, but. Oh, that's kind of weird. <laughs> okay. Um, it's delicious. It's delicious. Yeah. And then the other one did the other day where my roommates were like, what are you doing? Um, we had sweet potato, like a sweet potato mash. And then I just put some honey Dijon mustard in it and it was delicious, but I didn't think it was weird. That doesn't seem weird. as weird as cream okay. cheese and peanut butter. Peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and it. I'm also a big Hawaiian girly and a lot of people like Hawaiian pizza. Right. A lot of people don't believe pineapple belongs, but I, I'm a believer. I'm also a believer. Okay, excellent. I like that. Along. Okay, yeah. number number four. If you were stranded on a deserted island, what three items would you want to have with you? Sunscreen, um, some kind of device that could play music, um, uh, and um, lip balm. I like. It. Well, that's it's funny because you like your sport is beach so you're probably used to being on the beach you would know my sport being winter i'd be like i don't know what i'm gonna take <laughs> yeah what would you bring well sunscreen for sure yeah. yeah uh i like the lip chat but i'd probably bring a bunch of books yeah. like a library <laughs> yeah keep yourself entertained yeah um what's number five what's your go-to karaoke song oh my go-to is ain't no mountain high ain't no oh mountain high. yeah that's the one since since I university I do like that you can just like come up with that. Sometimes it's a struggle to find your karaoke song. It is, but I've been asked that before and that's my go-to song. So I, I was okay. prepared. You were prepared. Okay. Oh, so this one we've already answered, but it says if you could time travel, would you go to the past or the future and oh, why? Oh, well, we did answer that. Isn't that interesting? Okay, on mm -hmm. to the next one. What is the most embarrassing moment you've had on the volleyball court? Oh, um. I will say, actually, there was this one moment that uh, we were heading into the semifinals. And mm -hmm. um, if you know beach volleyball, you know you have to match your beach volleyball partner in terms of uniforms okay. and the colors you're wearing. Mm -hmm. um, and we forgot to check um, what bottoms we put on because we had leggings over our bottoms heading right. into warm up and all that kind of stuff. And 10 minutes before the game was about to start, the ref said, OK, you know, like, we're about to start. It was getting hot out. So um, get into your uniforms. I put on the jersey we had and everything. And we took our leggings off and we were wearing different bottoms. And, and they were not. Yeah. They were not going to let us play. Um, and so we were panicking. And um, our friend had just finished the previous semifinals right before us. And we were like, oh, my God. Can we just borrow your <sighs> bottoms? <laughs> And they just finished. They just played a game in these bottoms. We put them on over our, our bottoms that Thank we you. were wearing. Thank yes. you. In hygiene, of course. <laughs> yeah. But we were playing in like double bottoms. And it, it it was safe to say we lost that game because we were so frazzled. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've never done that before. And now I remember to always check. Um, Interesting. Yeah. That's a fun fact I didn't know about beach volleyball. You have mm -hmm. to match. Yes, colors. That's Not necessarily. You could wear leggings. If you're wearing red leggings and your partner's wearing a red shorts or bikini bottoms, you can do that. But the yeah. colors have to match. Yeah. So much so that you get disqualified? That seems a bit much. I know. I know. But whatever. Particular. Yeah. Namaste. <laughs> On to an easier question. Number eight. If you could eat only one cuisine for the rest of your life, what would it be? It would have to be like Turkish or Lebanese Mediterranean food. Like I love hummus. I love all the dips. I love the breads, um, like the tabbouleh, all that kind of stuff. It's like probably my favorite. Um, I don't think I could get sick of that. Yeah. And pizza. Uh -huh. I can't get, I can't get sick of pizza. And is Hawaiian your favorite? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I do love a Hawaiian. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Number nine, if you could be any animal for a day, which one would you choose and why? Um, either a sloth because they just are so cute and chill and I would love to chill. I look forward to a day that I can chill and just sleep all the time. Um, or a dolphin because they just look like they're living their best lives in there in the little water with their little friends. That is a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, last one of the rapid fire. This is a bit more serious because we're about okay. to get into talking about you qualifying um, for Paris. How do you stay motivated during tough times or setbacks? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think there's still a piece of myself that I haven't fully uncovered yet. And I'm 31 years old and have been doing this for a long time. So that part, trying to uncover that and really reach this next level or really see like what I have to offer, everything that I have to offer, it mm -hmm. excites me and it motivates me knowing that there's more to me than what I've um, been able to bring to the table. Um, on the flip side of that, I wouldn't be able to do any of this without like the support team around me. Like they really kind of keep me accountable and really get me excited to show up to practice every single day. So nice. um, I guess it's twofold, internal and external. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. That was the rapid fire. You did it. Done Woo! and dusted. Not Congratulations. So Thank you. <laughs> I've had guests that are like, I'm not ready. Um, um, and it's so, it's, it's painless, right? We just get to it know is. you a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. I want to talk – well, I want the listeners and viewers to know that you literally just came from practice and had like – you're like, I have sand everywhere. It's in my ears. Yes. Yeah. It's on my face. Yeah. <laughs> that is the dedication it takes to become an Olympic athlete. I want to touch on your first games, Tokyo, um, and get a gauge. I mean, not the easiest – um, time in our lives of anyone's, yeah. but to be an elite athlete at that time and go to the Tokyo 2021. Uh, what do you call them? 2021? Like, I know they probably still say, say 2020. 2020. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Even though yeah. they happened in 21. I mean, it's very cool to be part of that, but like, give us a little glimpse on, on what you were feeling going into those games, having qualified and what they were like for you. It, hmm, such. Mm -hmm mixed feelings about those games because mm -hmm. we were heading into 2020 um coming off of a fantastic year you know like 2029 or 2019 was our year we yeah. posted up some really great results you know we won the world championships we got that automatic berth for tokyo we were playing really well we were in our in our rhythm and then a few months into 2020 and a few months out of the games the whole world shuts down yeah. and i mean that was just a mental trip on so many levels because your priorities change a little bit right now. You're, you're just worried about health and safety and the safety yeah. of others around you. And training is no longer a priority. We're just trying to stay fit out of our living rooms or just yeah. try. And there's so much uncertainty heading into, are the games happening? They're postponed. When are they postponed until? How is this going to happen? And so you just had to kind of really just be adaptable and flexible. And I, I think that was really hard for me, someone who likes structure and routine. And I think right. athletes in general are just so used to having your routine and your structure. And when you don't know what you're doing the next day, it's mm -hmm. a trip. Um, and so that whole lead up to Tokyo was just, we were just trying to make it up. I think everybody was just trying yeah. to m figure out what to do by putting mm -hmm. on tournaments in a safe way, going to tournaments, traveling in a safe way. Traveling was so scary back then. Um, right. And, and then going into the games and the fear, oh my gosh, I remember the fear of like not testing positive before the games. And then you would hear some right. of your colleagues would test positive and their Olympic dreams were over. And it was just mm -hmm. like, you're in this constant state of fear, it felt like. Um, and so it was not the games preparation that any of us dreamed of or yeah. um, thought would happen. I think every athlete who were there at the games did an incredible job of adapting and like getting to that point of being there and kudos to everyone. Um, yeah. And then getting to the games itself was also um, not what you dreamed of, you know, like the stands I are know. empty, these beautiful, beautiful venues and these beautiful volunteers and the Japanese organizing committee did an incredible job of still putting on the games, but yeah. it was just not, it's not the one you dream of, right? Um, yeah. So kind of having to manufacture that own magic that you, you kind of expect to have in an Olympic Games, you know, when mm -hmm. you think of the Olympic Games, it's just this like excitement and there's just vibrations everywhere and there's this vibe and um, you kind of had to fake it a little bit in right. Tokyo, yeah, right? Yeah, it, yeah, it was yeah, a little yeah. bit different. Um, For sure. And, and you couldn't go support your fellow athletes, your fellow Canadians. You know, you you're very much in your bubble. So, um, mm -hmm. that, in a way, it was kind of easier to just focus on what you were there to do, um, right. and you just focus on the task at hand. There are there are kind of few distractions because you can't do a lot. Yeah. Um, you're stuck so, in your room. Yeah, 
Pretty much. Yeah. So yeah. There's, the, the, there's no one cheering you on. So it's just I you know. and your partner. So yeah, it was a bit of a trip. Um, it was, I was so grateful to be able to, um, that was my first Olympic. So grateful to mm -hmm. be able to become an Olympian and represent Canada mm -hmm. always on the global stage, but, um, very bittersweet. Leaving that was so weird. Um, leaving the, the village and going back home was like, what just happened? Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but I learned a lot of lessons, learned a lot of lessons from that. Oh, and sure. it, yeah. Think did, it it put, did it, okay. So because you've been on the national team since 2011 mm -hmm. and I want the listeners to get an understanding of how hard it actually is to qualify for the Olympics because yes, we become Olympians, but not everyone gets to see that struggle and like pressure yeah. um, leading up to the game. So for volleyball, can you kind of like just give us an idea of what that looks like in this, in the grand scheme? Is it a year? Is it a four year challenge? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So for beach volleyball, it's, um, it's a two year, um, qualification process. So okay. we start, um, for instance, for Paris, which is this year, we started oh. January 1st of 2023. So that's when our Olympic qualification starts. Um, mm -hmm. and there are three different ways to qualify. First, you win the world championships and you automatically get the berth. And that happened last year in Mexico. We did not win, unfortunately. Um, so that that way is out. The second yeah. way is to be ranked in the top. Um, I believe it's 16 in the world. Um, okay. And you have to get at least 12 events in from January 1st until I believe June something of this year. So you have, I guess, a year and a half to get 12 events in and be ranked in the top 16 in the world. We're currently four. So we're in a great spot and we're pretty much qualified, um, yeah. which is great. So now our focus is on seeding. So heading into the Olympics in a good seat. So we'd like to be okay. three, maybe two. Um, so we're kind of working on that right now. And then the last okay. way is kind of the continental route. So if you don't make it in the top 16, you have a backdoor route where you can go through your continental birth um, okay. and try and, try and get in that way. But we're pretty much solidly in at this point, which is great. <sighs> Do your parents yeah. have their tickets booked? Yes. Yes. <laughs> a lot. I, feel like, yes. I mean, that, that that's not on you. And when I was at the games, I'm like, you guys do your own thing because I'm focused, um, which I think is a great way to go about it. And yours might be different. But that's like kind of a little bit of a stressor of like, are you guys going to make it? Like, I know. Should you book your tickets now? <laughs> It is. It's It's also wild because um, we also don't know when we play in the Olympics. Like I think some sports have their schedules out already or like they know what date they're playing and who, what country they're playing. We don't know until three weeks before the Olympics. So like our parents are trying to buy tickets to our actual games. Yeah. And of course you don't know because the qualification isn't done yet. And so yeah, they're yeah, just yeah. like buying tickets at random, hoping that one of these games will be my game. So it's, yeah, it's oh weird, but gosh. I'm letting them handle that. And I'm focusing on what I have to focus yeah. on. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good, that's like totally yeah. what I would tell you to do. Like they're, yeah. they're in their own world. You're in your own world. You're super totally. focused. It's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Great to hear that. Um, you're right now fourth in the world. I love that for you. That <laughs> takes a lot of stress off of things going into yeah. the summer. Um, I, I did have something in your bio about good luck charms. So yeah. I wanted to get a gauge on what your good luck charm was and what it is now and when you need it and all those things. I love that. I, you really did the research. Um, so previously, um, I used to have a little elephant necklace, um, yeah. a little pendant of an elephant. And that was kind of my good luck charm. I just, I always kind of gravitated towards elephants and they've always kind of brought me luck here and there. Um, they've kind mm -hmm. of just been a symbol that then evolved into, um, and all of these, um, good luck charms were kind of passed down from my mom. Um, my mom's big on jewelry. And so she's very thoughtful when she gifts these little symbols. And the the next symbol that was gifted was, um, it was a four leaf clover pendant and it was in the stone lapis lazuli, which is I think um, quite traditional to Chilean culture, which um, I'm Chilean. And so um, we got this pendant from Chile. My mom brought it back and I wore that for a few years. And now it's changed a bit. I have this pendant on right now, which um, I don't know if you can see, but it's, it's a little lion and okay. or lioness and yeah. um, it's called the valiant um, pendant, coin pendant. And um, it just brings strength. It brings strength and power. And 
Um, I'm heading into Paris as a lioness. Mm -hmm. And it also brings me back to um, my college days where I played at York University and we were the lions. And Brandy and I were on our college team together as lions. And now we're back together. So it's kind of full circle. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that. That's so, that's so funny because you, as you're talking about your pendants, I'm like, I had a necklace that I had a four leaf clover, a heart and an M on it from my sister. And so oh, yes. it's, uh, it's pretty special to have something from your family while you're on the road pretty much all the time. All That's the amazing. time, yes. And it's also very grounding in games when I feel like, you know, a game is getting away from me or I, I'm not catching my breath. I'll just kind of like fidget with my necklace a little bit and it kind of bring me back. It'll be like a little For reminder. Sure. Yeah. Yes. I love that. Okay. Let's talk about your family a little, a little bit more. So your dad is a coach, um, yes. brought home bronze for Canada. Yeah. Is he still a huge part in your volleyball or have you like been like, dad, beat it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely in my teenage years, I was like, okay, dad. Okay. Well, yeah. we had a hard time with the, not a hard time, but um, managing the father daughter relationship is always mm -hmm. a little tricky. Um, yeah. But I think once I went pro, um, so maybe when I was in my early twenties, he, um, I went into the national team system and they kind of took me on from there and he stepped aside and just kind of let me grow and flourish on my own. But, um, he was always, and still is my coach. Like it's it, like from afar, you know, he's not my coach yeah. coach, but he's my dad. And after games, you know, I'll chat with him and he'll be like, Oh, yeah. how are you feeling about this? Or this is what I saw. And, you know, I'll take it in. And I appreciate having someone by my side who loves me so much and supports me so much that has actual knowledge about yeah. the sport and the game and has history of it. So wow. I know, yeah, I know when we're talking, like he, he knows what he's talking about. So it's easy for me to kind of take that information as well. And, and sometimes, um, you know, sometimes I'll take it, sometimes I won't, but it's just like, I really appreciate having a resource there. So, um, he'll, I think he'll always be involved in my volleyball career at some, in some capacity. And is he, I mean, you travel the world and go to hot destinations is opposite of mine. Does, <laughs> do, does your family come to a lot of your competitions or just like select ones? Yeah, they try to. So select ones, like they definitely try and go to the big ones. Um, yeah. My mom and stepdad are retired, so they get to come to a lot of tournaments, which is great. They Since they retired, um, they've loved it because they just love traveling. That's, they, that's how they wanted to spend their retirement. And so coming to see me play is something that they love to do. My yeah. dad is still a professor at York University, but okay. thankfully he has his summers off um, and that's when I compete. So he's able to come watch me play as well. So um, they've been to quite a few of my tournaments and I, I'm so grateful and, and lucky to be able to have them on the sidelines when they do come. And what about your brother who was also on the national team? What's he yes. up to and does he come watch you? Yeah, he tries. He tries. It's tough. Um, he's kind of been traveling all over the place. He did a couple of years in Vancouver, which he loved. Then he went over to Scotland um, to do a little coaching stint there. Now he's back in Toronto. He's actually literally going to come visit me in LA today. He's arriving in a couple hours, which is great. So he's going to spend the week here with me um, and just kind of see what my day to day looks like. He hasn't visited me in LA yet. So this is this is nice. But, um, you know, he's just moving on to new things, trying to figure out what he wants to do. You know, yeah. life after sport is always a little tricky. So um, I think it takes some time to figure it out and he's still figuring that out. And it's yeah. nice to have also someone like him um, where we're, we're so, you know, we're a little bit closer in age and he also has that volleyball background. So I would definitely call him up sometimes and I'm like, Oh, that game was so frustrating. What did you see? And we'll just yeah. talk it out. So it's great. I feel so lucky. I have, I have great people in that my is, life. That is so cool. My parents are skiers and they don't really know anything about snowboarding. So it's they're just like, different, hey? what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Amazing. My mom's like, this is too extreme. And she would like literally cover her eyes at like competitions. No they only my mom only ever came to yeah, um, three Olympics of the four, and then we had one world championships here. And I, I honest to God, she had her eyes closed the whole time until my last Olympics. Yeah. Where I like is crazy. She's no, I hilarious. will say, I will say watching the Winter Olympics, I'm like that. You guys are crazy. <laughs> Like, it's like, it's like, I don't know what you're doing. Everyone, every event is some kind of crazy, um, which is so incredible to watch. But I'm like, oh my God, how are they doing this? Like, I'm nervous. I'm nervous for you. 
<laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah. Um, it's so funny because I was looking at Paris and I was like, okay, if I were gonna to go to oops, if I were to go to Paris, what would I watch? Yeah. And it was you, it's you. I want to go see the beach volleyball. You're like right in front of the Eiffel Tower, aren't you? How cool is that? We got <laughs> prime location. I know, I know, no pressure, but those stands <laughs> will be packed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like what yeah. an amazing arena. Now, do yeah. you – because we would always have a world championships before. Is this going to be like a fresh thing for you? Or have you competed there before? So we've been to uh, some of the Olympic um, events in Paris or like pre-Olympic events in Paris. Um, yeah. But we played not in front of the Eiffel Tower, of course. Okay. We played um, actually in Roland Garros Tennis Stadium, which is also super iconic. Um, but it's not the same environment. So when yeah. we go to the Olympics and we're in front of the Eiffel Tower, that will be a completely brand new experience. And yeah. it'll just be like such a trip just seeing the Eiffel Tower and the lights and stuff at night. So yeah, we'll have to, it'll take a couple of days to get used to that whole environment. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And be like, wow, we're really doing this in front of the Eiffel Tower. Um, but then, and I'm sh I'm sure you've been to the Eiffel Tower, so you know exactly where it's gonna be. Yeah. I've actually only been to Paris once, and that was last year. Um, okay, how many people did you see peeing in public? <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> Wait, I totally missed that. But it was a crazy week. It was during like the bed bug. Um, oh no! During Fashion Week, and they had the Rugby World Cup and our tournament at the same time. So it was just crazy, crazy, crazy. Holy moly! I went there with my brother once, and I was like, yeah. I've never seen more people being in public. This is crazy. <laughs> um, and we were near the Eiffel Tower, so I'm like, yeah. don't get that in your head. Um, but <laughs> because you haven't competed there is there like I'm thinking if it's like windy like yeah, does that have yeah. a factor in there totally. for you guys right. yeah it totally does and I think I have a suspicion that we'll pro probably play in the evening games just because okay. of prime time television um so we'll be playing at night under the stars and that's also something that we're not super used to we don't always yeah. play at night so okay. that's that will add an, a, an extra layer um and yeah the wind will always, always add an extra layer, all the elements, yeah. you know, the sun, yeah. the wind, if it rains, if it's cold, you have to be prepared for everything. Um, do you play in the rain? We do play in the rain. The only thing we don't play in is lightning. Um, well, that's so, fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we played in some torrential downpours. It's not pleasant, um, but no. we will play through most things. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh, I'm intrigued. I honestly, I I hope I get it to Paris, but if I don't, I'm gonna come, be watching you. Like come. it's yeah. gonna be so amazing. I am. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time. Is there anything yeah. else you want to add? Like shout out to your crew. You you talked about that earlier. How the support yes. system is so huge, and your family. Is there anything else you want to add? So huge. I'm so lucky to have my team and my teammate. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's so much to being an athlete that you don't see, you know, all the behind the scenes. And I feel like um, it looks so glamorous on social and on TV. And, I, you know, the way that the journey to the Olympics looks, it looks like it's easy and whatever. And I think there's, there's so much more to what we go through and also our responsibilities. You know, it's not just, you know, in the gym and on the court, we have other obligations as well. And, and you know, sometimes we um, also partake in like athletes commissions or we're in school at the same time, or, you know, we are, we have other interests and other projects that we have on the side, which is so hard to juggle both. And yeah. so I think there's this, like, there's this appreciation for athletes who try and do a lot. I, I think there's a time, especially for me coming soon, we're already end of March where I'm going to start to lock in and kind of you know, mm -hmm. dial into the games and kind of put some of those other interests on hold for a second. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, it's a big balance. And, and I think it's like podcasts like these, where you get to know who the athlete is, not just as an athlete, but as a person mm -hmm. and as a human and um, some of their other interests and stuff. I think, I think this is really special. And I, and I just thank you for having a platform where we can talk and show our personalities and yeah. be more than just who we are on the court. And yeah, of I course. appreciate that. I do want to touch on, um, all of your social media and you have like yeah. a vlog and everything. <laughs> Is that something that's going to take more of a, a sidestep while you're competing or you're still going to share the journey with people? That's a really good question. Um, 
I actually do quite enjoy um, kind of making these like mini vlogs and these little like tidbits, like this is the day in our life or, you know, come join me for a workout type things that this is, you know, mm -hmm. what traveling looks like. Um, it is fun to show the real side of it because it's not always glamorous. So I think that's what mm -hmm. I like to be very real about that. Um, it is a lot of work. The editing of those little vlogs, even they're like a minute long, um, they're a lot of work. So yeah. um, if I can, if I can manage it, I'll keep doing it and, yeah. you know, um, show the journey to the game. But um, yeah, I think I know my my limits as well, where I'm like, okay, I've spent too long on social media, not a priority right now. But yeah, I, I do want to ask you, do you have a time limit on your social media? Because I had, I put one on mine. I don't, but yeah, I think yet. I okay. should. No, not yet. And I think, but yeah. I think I, I see other people do it and you know how you can do like 15 more minutes or like 15 I know. more minutes. Or something. That's I think me. I would do that. Yeah, I think I would That's do that. Me. But at least you know You're how aware. much time you've spent on it rather than yes. like aimlessly there's two hours of your life no gone. that's a really good point <laughs> i think i have to do that actually because i can get into a very deep deep scroll it's bad and then and for me it's not good for my mental health so it's just totally. it's just something that i do um totally. well i love i absolutely like needless to say i absolutely love when you do things because i'm just like volleyball a whole different world I, you have totally. probably the smallest amount of luggage compared to my luggage um yeah. envious I didn't, even think about that. I didn't even think about that because I actually feel like I pack too much all the time uh, yeah. and it, it's like nothing compared to you. <laughs> I'm carrying like a freaking board bag and oh, another bag. Yeah. So um, I, I, even though you have to wear a bathing suit on the court, I'm like, <sighs> yeah, yeah, yes, that's no. true. Actually, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. I love it. I love it. Where can people find you online if they want to see what you're up to? Yeah, I'm pretty active on Instagram. That's kind of my main platform. And it's my full long name, Melissa Humana Paredes. Um, you should find me. I think I do have a little blue check mark. So hopefully that pops up. And um, that's kind of where I have most of my content. And sometimes I'll do a little TikToking. Sometimes I'll do a little threads. Maybe some YouTube. It hasn't been it hasn't been around in a bit. But you know, follow me on all platforms and maybe I'll surprise you. Yes, please follow her. Thank you so much for dropping in today. Yeah. It was a pleasure having you on. Pleasure if moment. anyone wants to follow us on Dropping In, please do. We are on social, on Facebook and Instagram, and we also are on YouTube, so check it out. You can also go to the website to see who else has been on on droppinginwithmercedes.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is so fun. For dropping in today. You can find everything you want to know about dropping in with Mercedes at droppinginwithmercedes.com. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. Thanks, DJ Kenosis, for the music and my mom for the intro voice.